thinks that in fact you should reform yourself. And I would say that in many organizations that I have seen on the ground, there is something which is lacking. That we are training young and not so young in a way which is good because it's just be committed. This consistency between what you believe and what you do within your society, all this is good. But we can't carry on without coming to the essence of things that at the end, power and uh, dealing with politics is a means, is not the end. It's so important to come back to this. At the end, what do you want? In the Malu bin Niyat means your niya should be checked day in, day out. And why today we have some trends that are facing the haraka is that they are responding with the other side of the coin, the other side of the, by saying, Spirituality is the essence of everything. So they come back with all, all this movement are reforming Islam, they are haraka with Islam. We want to come back with a Turaf wa Ruhani. And they come with something which is quite interesting for people who are lost is a very hierarchical structure where you have the Sheikh and the followers, the Murid and all this, and there is a kind of, you know, uh, 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 respect with the sheikh and uh, we like titles and all this. So it's responding to what is lacking in the haraka mm -hmm. by doing something which is this is spirituality and it works like this. So I think that in, 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 uh, in, uh, instead of uh, rejecting everything, we need to listen to, it, to what is said which is right in the criticism that are uh, uh, expressed by these new movements. And they are gaining ground because they come with some people who know, for example, how to deal with the West because they have been, you know, they have been converted or they converted to Islam. They know what are, you know, the West is in a, in a spiritual crisis, a spiritual famine. And you come with spirituality, structure, tradition, and all this. It's very attractive. And uh, politicians and some political power are pushing in that direction because they don't want to be involved in politics. So they, they just have a very superficial discourse in politics, but they are not involved in politics. They say politics is not, is not, is not our uh, uh, priority. So I would say that uh, uh, we can see now new networks everywhere who are stressing on this, and they are strong out of our weaknesses in the whole movement they mentioned. And I would say that in the, the, the only way forward for the Islamic movement is to reconcile themselves, all the, the organizations, with the spiritual dimension of Islam. And it's very important to be serious about this. Not coming with halal, haram, no, the spiritual dimension, the meaning, the tarbiyat the al-nafs, tazkiyat uh, uh, sorry, tazkiyat al It's critical now. It's critical because the people, they need to have spirituality. They don't only want to be active. Mm. And some of our organizations are not promoting only them to be active, but to be agitated. Mm. You know the difference between an active uh, member and an agitative member? The active member is active for a very specific purpose. And he knows exactly the trick. The agitated is many, many things and he has no center. So some of you here are becoming agitated and we want them to be active. And active means you know why you pray during the night. Mm. And you know how you have to deal with the principles during the day. We have to listen to what is happening because some people are leaving. I can tell you that some people are really leaving and going to something which is more secure politically and more deep spiritually. I say this is what I'm asked to do, just to pray, to, to feel better. So, and in the West is working very well and now it's coming everywhere in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Egypt. And it's not, it's not new, but now it's getting some strength in the way it's presented to people. So in the discussion that I had with uh, Hamza Yusuf, uh, he, it was quite interesting because he was presenting himself as the guardian of the tradition, and uh, while at the same time going to a kind of uh, Sufi tradition, and you can see the way there is an authority between him and the followers, that I'm questioning this, I don't want this, but, but the point for me is 
the way we question the tradition and we have to deal with new challenges, with which he is, he agrees. You know, in, in what I was saying about the Hadoot, he came to me and he told me, I very much agree with what you are saying, but he's not going to say it in public. So, so these are things that uh, uh, we have discussion on this. I, I really respect many of the leaders in the, because they are very much putting things that are very critical in discussion. Is how do we deal with our hearts? How do we deal with the priorities? And I think I am listening to them. And I like many of them in the way they are putting things as questions that we have to ask. Now we may agree on priorities, even though I think that on, on the fundamentals we agree. And we should go beyond this uh, dispute about uh, uh, who is leading now. And, and, and you know, this is very, very sad to see you know, competitions on numbers and competitions on who is first, who is second. As long as your intention is for Allah wa ta'ala, we need to add our voices and not to clash. Uh, this is the way I, I understand the accepted diversity in Islam. About what you were, what I can say about Malaysia, and, uh, which I, I would like you to tell me more about. I have, been, I have been studying a bit what is happening here and what is the reality. What I'm saying, once again, is that uh, this region is going to be critical and very critical in the coming years for many reasons. Uh, first, because of the presence of very powerful uh, 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 countries, of course, China in the region and, uh, and uh, the Asian side of the, the globe now with India, but also because of the potentials that you have. And two countries are important. Indonesia is not very much in the radar now in all the discourse, but it is in fact. It's going to be very important. And what you see within the Islamic movement is, once again, different trends. You have now uh, people who are working from within the secular system in, in, in Indonesia. They are giving up on many things. I'm very worried about what I see from some Islamic discourses. And you have from within that are working in a very interesting way uh, uh, and trying to, uh, to, to reconcile all what I was saying about, you know, they have it as something which is the, the, the very essence of the movement when it comes to the civil society, within the secular society, working at the grassroots, with the trade unions, with the uh, uh, institution, is very important. And this is also what you have here. You, for a while, as a being, you have been working and uh, 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 going through certain steps in your own evolution. A being that I meant, uh, met 12 years ago is not exactly the same for many reasons the, uh, and, and the evolution of the Islamic discourse in this country. Uh, now you have people who want now to speak about moderate Islam or, or, or new, new type of Islam. I think that it's very important for, for the movement here to be quite clear between some who have a narrow understanding of what is and should be an Islamic state, quote unquote, and others who wants to completely dilute the Islamic preference into the secular. In between there is a way. In between there is a powerful way of connecting the people. So I think that instead of being between divisions, be the bridge between trends that can be in the two sides you can have people who understand. And I think that this is what I see now. I see people when I'm, I'm, uh, I'm coming in this region, I see people who have this sense, who have this understanding. What is missing is clarity, is a clear vision of what are the priorities, a clear vision of what should be the way we are dealing with some of the, 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 uh, the discourse, knowing that you are not going to be protected from all the discourse that we have in Muslim majority countries in the Middle East and that we have in the West. When it comes to now the very sensitive issues, you will see that some people are coming, talking every time about secularism, about uh, some of the questions on women, some of the question on homosexuality. Homosexuality is a very big lobby internationally. It's, a, it's, it's powerful at a, at a level which you cannot just imagine how much they are powerful. And they are pushing and pushing and pushing to see where you are going to stop. And you have to stop straight away. At the beginning, I'm not going to end the discussion. This discussion is clear. In Islam, homosexuality is haram, is prohibited. Now, you do whatever you want. I can respect who you are. I respect who you are. I don't agree with what you do. 
this is studied discourse is putting things clear. I'm not going to judge you as a person, but I have the right in my freedom of conscience to judge what you do, and you cannot impose this onto me. This is human rights, by the way. Human rights is freedom of conscience. So freedom of conscience is not to let you colonize my mind. So I think that uh, it's very important. It's very important to have a clear discourse on this, because some Muslims here, when you are together, it's very easy to be strong. And now you are exposed in the, the, the surrounding society, you don't know what to say exactly when you are attacked on this. You have to be prepared, I think, the Islamic movements everywhere, they should be prepared on the list of questions that they know. Not only it's coming from the West now, it's coming from their own fellow citizens. Because they hear what is said, they come this, they integrate this into the discourse, and they play the game. So it's not now, it's not uh, a Western agenda. <coughs> it's within Malaysian society, mm -hmm. which we have these struggles. And I think that this is an important step that the Islamic movement should understand to go a step further. Now, the last thing, uh, the last question about uh, what was said. Uh, yes, if you look, if you look and try to assess the economic situation on some countries on their own, it's quite clear that we are far behind. Now, I wouldn't accept this if you look at uh, what is happening in, uh, in the world if only we were able to go beyond you know, this one per one or case per case situation. Because the petrol monarchies, or even now Libya, or even now northern uh, uh, Mali, or even in Afghanistan, and in all this region in, in, in North uh, Asian countries, it's rich that you cannot just imagine how rich these regions are. But the problem is that the Arabs and the Muslims are completely divided and they are under the authority. So anything that could help the uh, Muslim majority countries to be much more, uh, as I said, connected, to have new relationships. And if we are serious about democratization on political terms, it means that you should be free to have new economic partners. If this is possible, it means that something, the shift could be, could be done. And some of the countries that are not uh, in the West, the Americans or the Europeans, might be more ready to help this kind of connection. I would say, for example, that the Chinese approach towards the Middle East is much more interesting today than anything that is coming from divide and rule coming from the European countries and coming from the United States of America. So there is a struggle here, and I would say uh, it's, not, it's not really true that uh, they are behind everything in economic terms. They have enough wealth, but they don't have enough power or enough will or enough independence to deal with them. And this is what is needed today. So I uh, would also like to hand over our very own Malay traditional dress <laughs> to you. Uh, the one that uh, one, yeah, the one that our very own Malay scholar. I will wear it the next time I come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one that uh, our very own scholar.